Thank you for your interest in the Applied Behavior Analysis Programs at Assumption University. My name is Karen Lionella Denolf, and I am the Director of the ABA Programs. I'm going to spend just a few minutes talking about the benefits and features of our program. I always like to start off by talking about what is Applied Behavior Analysis for folks who don't know. And basically, this is using the science of learning and behavior to make meaningful improvements in people's lives. So what that means is, is that we look to the environment and about, and we use um, what we know about how the environment influences behavior in order to um, make changes for people so that it can improve um, their, their, their outcomes and the, um, the, the lives of the people who care about them. One of the most well-known applications of applied behavior analysis is to autism intervention. And people who are interested in working with individuals with autism and ABA have a lot of career options. Um, you can have positions as a consultant to public schools. You can work in public and private schools, in agencies that provide ABA services exclusively, and in broader human service agencies. However, because ABA is application of the science of behavior, it's relevant um, in a variety of areas in addition to autism. These are some examples of fields in which ABA has been used and has made an impact for people. Um, and these include residential treatment programs, general and special education um, for, for populations other than those with autism, business field, mental health, animal behavior, and many others. So the goal of our programs at Assumption is to prepare you to be an excellent behavior analyst. To me, this means someone who's able to apply principles of behavior in a variety of situations, and they're able to work as a team with other service providers. Another goal of our program is to provide research experience. The foundation of, of applied behavior analysis is the science of behavior. So we have a strong focus on teaching students who want to be clinicians on how to understand that research and apply it. But if for students who are interested in going further and actually being um, involved in conducting some of that research, we provide research experience either at, by working with faculty on research projects or by completing a research thesis. We are also, um, our, our final goal is to prepare, prepare students for a doctoral program in ABA if that is something that they are interested in. Um, and for those students, I would highly recommend pursuing a research thesis option. So our program has many advantages and I'm going to talk about those next. The first advantage is that we are verified by the Association for Behavior Analysis International as meeting the requirements for students to sit for the board certified behavior analyst exam under the fifth edition task list. So in order to um, become a BCBA, you need to meet certain education requirements and you also need to meet certain field work requirements. Um, you do not have to go to a, a, in a university that has a verified course sequence. The advantage of a verified course sequence is that you know in advance that your coursework meets the guidelines, the content criteria in order to qualify to sit for the BCBA exam. If you don't go to a verified course sequence, the work is on you to um, complete a bunch of paperwork and show the, the Behavior Analyst Certification Board that you meet their requirements and you're not gonna know ahead of time whether, whether the courses do or not. By attending a verified course sequence, we've done all of that work for you already. And so you know from the beginning that if you com successfully complete the program, that your coursework will be approved for the, to sit for the exam. Another advantage of our program is that we include practicum as part of your degree. So the practicum sequence provides fieldwork experience that's designed to meet the requirements to sit for the BCBA exam. 
The advantage to completing a program that includes practicum is that when you graduate, you have all of your field work hours in addition to the degree and the course content that you need. So you are ready to apply to sit for the exam when you graduate. Another advantage um, with the practicum sequence in our program is that it is coordinated with the coursework so that you have the opportunity to apply what you're learning about in your classes with real clients as you've learned about it. Another advantage of our program is that we meet requirements to apply for licensure as an applied behavior analyst in Massachusetts. So board certification by the BCBA, BACB and licensure by the state of Massachusetts are two separate things. In order to become a BCBA, you need to qualify for the BCBA exam and pass it. And once you do that, you're a BCBA wherever you go. Um, but to practice independently as a BCBA, you need to be licensed if the state in which you are working in has a licensing law. Massachusetts does have a licensing law. So in order to practice as an independent behavior analyst practitioner in Massachusetts, you need to be both a BCBA and licensed. The program requirements um, at a, for assumptions program meet the requirements for licensure. So what you would do is once you take and pass the BCBA exam, you would then be able to apply for your license as a licensed applied behavior analyst in Massachusetts. Another advantage to our program is our faculty. All of our faculty are board certified behavior analysts who have a wealth of experience in the field. They are all licensed in Massachusetts and they have really diverse backgrounds. They have worked in across the across the, the faculty. They have worked in public and private schools, um, schools particularly target uh, geared for children with developmental disabilities. They have home based and clinic experience. They have experience working in broader human service agencies, working with both adults and children with autism and individuals with other diagnoses. Many of them have doctoral degrees in behavior analysis or in related fields, and some of them are distinguished researchers. So the advantage that this brings is that they have a diversity of experience that they can share with you in the classroom, which makes you a stronger behavior analyst. Another strength of our program is our supervisors. All of our supervisors have strong clinical experience in a variety of settings. They are good behavior analysts, excellent behavior analysts, and they are committed to sharing their expertise with you in order for you to develop strong clinical skills to be the most effective behavior analyst you can be. So why choose assumption? Well, in addition to the, the advantages I've already talked about, we strive to create well-rounded scientist practitioners and give you the skills necessary to make a meaningful difference in your clients' lives. Um, so by that, I mean, we really want our students to graduate and be more than minimally prepared to sit for the BCBA exam. We want you to be the strongest behavior analyst possible and everything that we do is geared with that goal in mind. We're also a multidisciplinary program. So we work really hard to showcase the science behind behavior analysis and how it can be applied in a variety of settings with a variety of populations. Um, so this I believe is necessary so that you have a, a really strong foundation in the, um, in the field. And then finally, we will prepare students for applied careers if that is what they are interested in and also for careers that include research if they are interested in that. So we have two different programs that we offer. One is a Master of Arts in Applied Behavior Analysis. This is a 46 credit program that also has six optional credits of thesis. So you're not required to complete a research thesis if that's something that you're interested in um, it's an additional four credits. So it would be a 51 credit program with the thesis option. 
Our second program is a Certificate of Advanced Graduate Study in ABA. This is for applicants who already have a master's degree in a related field, but they're interested in becoming, in completing the, the ABA coursework so that they can apply to sit for the BCBA exam. So this is a 37 credit program. So the master's in ABA includes um, seven courses that are part of our verified course sequence. And then in addition to that, it includes some, um, some two other behavior analysis courses. One is a course on the experimental analysis of behavior, and then the second is a capstone. And this experimental analysis class is a really important class because this is a class where we um, kind of do a survey of what's going on in the basic literature right now, and how is that being applied um, to, it, to clients? How is that being um, developed into interventions? Um, this is a really good class for you to have because it kind of puts um, on your radar some of the developing science um, that's going on right now in the field. We also include multidisciplinary electives as part of the master's program. And you are um, invited to take two of these electives and they include courses on developmental disabilities, autism, typical development, and collaboration and counseling skills. Our CAGS in ABA consists of the seven courses in the verified course sequence and a capstone course. Both the masters and the CAGS programs include, requi include required practicum courses. So these are five courses that are taken over four semesters. So the first semester you take two course, two practicum courses, and then the, the subsequent semesters, you just take one practicum course. Practicum requires that you work or volunteer at a site where you have behavior analytic duties at least part-time. Our supervision model is a shared model between the site and the program. So we, Assumption provides a supervisor, but we also ask that you have an, a qualified supervisor at your field work site. Any supervisor has to meet the BACB qualifications um, to provide supervision and must be licensed in Massachusetts. Your field work site also must be able to provide some unrestricted activities. So what this means is they need to be willing and able to provide you with the types of experiences that you need to learn how to be a BCBA under supervision. Many of our students come to the program when, when they apply to the program, they are already working at a site that they would like to use for their field work. Um, so we work with students to make that happen. If you are someone who does not currently have a field work site, uh, we partner with a lot of different um, agencies and schools in the Worcester area. Um, so we would be able to assist you in finding an appropriate placement. So our master's program can be completed in six semesters. This is including summer semesters, but we also invite students to um, take a part-time route and um, complete the program in two and a half or three years if that is something that they would prefer. Um, if you're going to complete the program in six semesters, you are going to be taking three classes per semester for most of the time in the program, but you will have some semesters where you only take two classes. Classes meet once per week in the evening. So we are typically an on-campus program. Um, so that would mean that you're gonna be coming to class two to three times per week, depending on how things are scheduled. Um, and all of our courses are verified for the BACB fifth edition task list. So in terms of admission requirements for the master's program, you need to have a BA or a BS or that degree needs to be in progress and it can be in any undergraduate major. We ask for an, a minimum undergraduate GPA of 3.0. Um, but if your GPA is not quite at 3.0, we still encourage you to apply because we take a holistic look at the application. We ask for three letters of recommendation. And I encourage you to ask to choose your letter writers wisely 
and to ask them to write a letter that's going to address your ability to succeed in a graduate program. Um, so for that reason, we do encourage you to um, have at least one academic letter of reference. So this means from a faculty member that um, worked with you or knows you from your undergraduate studies or from uh, or from your graduate studies if you've completed a graduate program already. Um, your other letters may be professional letters. All of the letters should address your ability to complete a rigorous graduate program and then they can also address your knowledge and strength in the field of ABA. We also ask that you include a one to two page personal statement. And this personal statement should tell us about why you want to be a behavior analyst. What is it about this field um, that ignites your passion and, want, and, and makes you want to pursue graduate work? Um, your personal statement can also be a place where you address some shortcomings in your application. So for example, if your GPA was um, not quite a 3.0 because you um, struggled your first, some, your first year in college, like many um, first year college students do, and then you, you kind of hit your groove and you had an, an in, improving GPA throughout the rest of your, your time in college, that would be something to talk about. Um, if there are extenuating circumstances that might have negatively impacted your GPA, um, you can briefly talk about that. Keep in mind that your personal statement serves two purposes. One purpose is that this is a writing sample. This is another way for us to um, assess your ability to complete graduate work. So please have somebody look it over, make sure that you proofread it before you submit it. Then the second purpose is that it allows us to determine why it is that you want to be, why, why it is that you want to be a BCBA, um, what it is that about this field that, that really um, speaks to you to kind of help us get a feel um, of, your, of your fit for the program. We also have an online application that we would ask you to complete we would need official copies of your transcripts. So this means copies that are sent to us either in paper form or electronically directly from the institution that you attended. Um, a current resume, um, we do not require the GRE and we do not have an application fee. If you are applying to the CAGS program, all of these things still apply. And then we would also ask that you submit your your um, transcripts for your graduate degree. So I've included here some contact information. If you have questions about behavior analysis, about the program content, the courses, practicum, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email and phone number are listed here and I will respond to you sooner through email. Um, if you have questions about admissions process, you can contact Sue Cahill. Her phone number and email are here. And then if you had financial aid questions, the information for financial aid is here as well. So thank you very much. And I look forward to meeting you.